Listen, but it was more like we were into the craft of what hip hop was at right. that time, which was a lot of sampling, a lot of you know beats, beats and rhymes, boom bap. You know, right. KRS One was hot at that time. Sure. You know, Biz Markie was hot at that time. Right. And we were trying. There were two reasons to have it. You had it to dance because you just want to relax and have fun after dealing with all that shit, or you had it because that shit's happening and you're angry and pissed off. It's a lot like rock and roll that way, actually. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's that's music in yeah. general. You you know, and for us, where where our studio was at was a street called Sacramento Street in Altadena. It's this hot street. The street was hot, baby. Yeah. And yeah, people we on it. And, and we had guns. We had dope. We had weed, we had hoes, we had everything on one little block. Wow. And we would get into it, the sheriffs was coming through. It and was hot. And, and our listen. studio yeah. was in the heart of that block. Wow. So everybody in there, it was like, when you came up that street, they, you would get checked. And if you said, I'm going to the studio, you had a pass. It didn't wow. matter if whatever, if you were a blood, this was a crip neighborhood. If it was a blood and he said, I'm going to the studio, you got to pass because the studio was Looking like around. the heart of everything. Right. And if you were going to the studio, you, we, you weren't going to hang out. You was going to make music. Mm -hmm. So people, you know, the other, other homies in the hood respected that. So it was like, okay, you, you got to pass. But uh, after you drop them lines, get your ass up out of here. <laughs> and that's how it was. Well, you were telling that story at the improv. I was talking with you with Big Mike about back in that day. I mean, it's fucked up. It's, it's still fucked up, but... Back in the day, if you had more than two black people in the car, they would stop you. Oh, that's, that's, man, I still don't ride with three people and three black people in the car, man. Really? Nah. No. I, listen, L.A., driving, nothing that's going on right now is new to me. Right. It's not new. Only thing that's new is that it's being captured on film. Right. That's all. And it, it, it doesn't matter. I'm not shocked by that. Mm -hmm. Because people knew it was going on then. Well, it I was just already didn't thinking, happen. you just replaced yeah. crack with meth now. Or, yeah. or, or you know, it's, it's just the, the LAPD, man, and the LA sheriff. You got to remember the dude who ran the sheriff is in jail right now. Right. Sheriff Baca, you locked up. Yo, you think this foulness, this is, this LA, right. there's, you notice there's, there's a way things are run out here and we just don't ask questions. A lot there of it us. is. Listen, I, after living in New York and living in a city where they have the mob, where they got this and they got that, they got the restaurant, they got every, all these different neighborhoods got different. Right. They didn't have that out here because they already knew. Mm -hmm. It's like the mob was set up for when the mob got here, there was already a mob here. Right. It's called the police. Right. Boom. That's the combination that. between entertainment and money that comes from different places and all the deals people already have to make. Speak Everybody already here. knows. We all know. We just don't say anything or talk about it. I mean, it's, it, it's like this. If you know, then you really know that you're not going to do anything about it. Right. right. It's exactly. the way it is. It's the land. And it's really this country. It's America, baby. You're the biggest gangsters on the planet. You just follow the money right up to the politics. <laughs> yeah. I don't need to please uh, stop us before you start talking about Trump. But That yeah. wasn't even it. It doesn't matter. It's all the politics. Well, oh, actually, whoever's yeah. above Trump. But exactly. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, before we get Trump's that, new. Right. He just did. He, he yeah, somebody, somebody put, put him in. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so, uh, but how you got into comedy is just everybody kept saying you were funny. Yeah, I've been funny my whole life. I've always been that dude. I don't yeah. even... Even if I would end up going to L.A. County, I'd be having people laughing in L.A. County. Right. It didn't matter. Through school, through whatever, I was just that dude. Yeah. And I, was that, I, I gotta tell you, I've been in L.A. County and I wasn't funny. I just I, kept it I, myself. I, hey, you just had if you get if you be there long enough. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't there long enough. <laughs> you have no choice. Yeah. And it was it was you know laughter releases tension, man. Mm -hmm. Laughter makes people calm down. Mm -hmm. And the thing about laughter is, it's, it's, it, it supersedes a lot of stuff, man. It, right. supers, it, it supersedes racism. Funny is funny. Yeah. Oh, Period. Yeah. Cool. And one of the hardest times, which makes stuff funnier, is when you're in a situation where you're not supposed to laugh. Oh, that's when, it, that's when it's That's funny. when it's even funnier. So if you're in L.A. County Jail, right. and you see a sheriff come through, and this sheriff just happens to have a nose that looks like a Volkswagen coming at you. <laughs> <laughs> you point that out, yeah. 
and everyone else laughs because it's that shit. You know what I'm saying? And people that normally would be your enemy because you made them laugh are like, hey, man, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking my mind off of whatever. Now, Officer, Officer Volkswagen knows he would get upset, but even the other sheriffs would be laughing. Yeah. So what are you going to do? Well, actually, I, I, I cracked crack people up a couple times, but uh, <laughs> I was a little too scared to have a full set. So, uh, But how you got into comedy. Even in the jail? Yeah. We'll talk about it. I'm like, I want to hear that story. Yeah, I wasn't in jail a lot. Don't no, no. get it twisted. I, I, wasn't, I didn't grow up going in No, no. I, I, when I was in jail, it was a whole traffic thing. It was a, yeah. yeah, it was a traffic thing for me, too. But, yeah. you know. I almost grabbed the black newspaper. It was, it was a whole thing. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It's, it's, it's not how you got there. It's what it's now you're there. Right. And I don't care how you got there. You're there now. So it is what it is. Oh, you're from Altadena? Okay. Well, we know exactly what you are. Right. Okay. Now, uh, how you got into comedy, because uh, we have a limited time for this, so I want to make sure to get all those things I want to talk about. And I want to have you back for a full I want to be point. back, too, man. I'm, hey, I'm going to be back. Absolutely. God willing. But you, uh, you, were, you were bagging on a producer. Uh, an engineer. Engineer. An engineer. And Somebody I, was not as handsome as Trevor Hardy. It, it was, you know, it wasn't even. It, it was just. I was just me being me. Yeah. And the guy kept messing up. He had a toupee on. <laughs> and it was obvious. You know, you could wear a toupee and it's not obvious. It's like it didn't work. I mean, I. You know, this was like a, a skunk rug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, come on, man. Nobody's gonna talk about this. Yeah. And so I started calling him Harry Wigman. Oh, so I'm like, yo, uh, Harry Wigman, r run that back. And people are laughing, and you know, and he kept messing. I was like, yo, Harry Wigman, I need you to push that toupee to the front like you mean business. And that was it. Everyone lost it. He started unplugging stuff and turning stuff off. They're like, what, what are you doing? We, we got to record. He's like, I did not come to work to be chastised by a professional comedian. <laughs> wow. And I was like, dude, I'm not a professional. He's like, yeah. Yeah, right. I know a professional. I work in this industry. I'm not here for you to practice on. Wow. <laughs> and so my man, Kelsey Maxwell, K Mac, who's still my friend to this day, said, Freeze, come out the booth. Let me talk to you. And he was like our manager of, right. of this big, huge, massive hip hop crew, 360. Right. And he says, Yo, man, um, listen, you're a good rapper. Right. You are. But right now, the game calls for an extraordinary rapper. Right. And that's not you, homie. But I will say, you're the funniest person I know mm -hmm. th that, I've, that I've ever met. You should do comedy. Mm -hmm. Now, come on out this booth, and let's give this kid Exhibit A a try. I'm like, yo. Exhibit. Exhibit. Who later became Exhibit. He dropped the A. But mm -hmm. Name is Exhibit A? Exhibit A is what his first that makes rap sense. name was. His first name is Alvin. It was Exhibit A. Oh, wow. And so it was it still X? No, it was no it, it, it was. It was. Maybe. I'm, I'm not even sure, to be honest with you. But he was an extraordinary rapper. <laughs> and that was exactly what that crew needed. Right. And he went into the booth. And I went out outside. He hadn't busted rhymes or nothing yet. And um, my boy says, yo, he's telling the truth, Freeze. My homie Reese Clark. He's right. like, Freeze. You need to do comedy. And all my other homies are like, yo, he's not lying, homie. You you really need to. You need to quit bullshitting. And my he says, I can And get you had no aspirations to do comedy. No, no, no. Guy. I wanted to do comedy. My my in my head, I was gonna become a rapper. And well, then, that's what everybody was doing. Yeah, everyone was doing it. Was no like, one's gonna run you were so the you, you were gonna be Donald Trump. But rap was the end. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If I could rap, which I could, decent and I could rap better than a lot of these dudes out here. So I was like, yeah, I'm going there and Become a rapper and then switch off and start doing comedy. So you were going to be a good Donald Glover before there was Donald Glover. Yeah, <laughs> way before that. And right. it was, and, and it's rapper crazy in and all that actuality, yeah. I was. Yeah. Because right after that, I started comedy that night. Right. It was 19, it was, I remember the date. It was November 3rd, 1992. Wow. And we went to the comedy store with my man, Danny Grayson, who, rest in peace. He introduced me to Dante, who right. you know, who I gave you your yeah. first time up yeah. ever. And I went up, I did my thing. Eddie Griffin saw me. Right. And he's like, yo, man, 
how long have you been doing this? I said, this is my first time. He's like, nah, I don't mean 